Today, I'm going to talk about a dog I saw, and it's going to be one of three cases I've seen. I've seen hundreds of aggressive <laughs> I've seen hundreds of aggressive dogs, but these three were particularly hard, and they're three different dogs. So, for anyone that wants to learn how to deal with aggressive dogs as a personal trainer in 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 the owner's home one of the hardest things to do i'm going to tell you exactly what i did but if you're stupid enough to just go bowling in and doing what i did <laughs> without any experience you're going to get yourself in big trouble because it takes a lot of experience to deal with aggressive dogs, so start with the little, start with dogs that size. When they bite you, they're going to hurt, but they're not going to take your fingers off. So we're going to talk about. I got a call from Stacy, and her her man asking me to come and see. Well, asking me lots of questions. They wanted to employ a, another trainer. They'd already had three personal trainers out. Dismal, <laughs> with dismal success, three useless personal trainers, I'll tell you about them in a minute. And so we had a back and forth, because she has, well they've got a Wolfhound Cross Ridgeback, three years old, that's very aggressive to dogs and people in the house. Nervous aggressive, aggressive and doesn't like men at all. So. I'm not too keen on going to see big aggressive dogs anymore. So I'm asking all the questions before. So they've got to talk me into going to see them. And they were asking me hundreds of questions because they were very nervous about paying out more money after paying out over $2,000 for these three trainers for no, no result whatsoever. So in the end, we come to liking each other and they booked me to go and see them. And I'll just tell you first about how the other trainers carried on. So I'll just look at my notes, <laughs> the first one. It's funny if you don't spend the money. <laughs> if you spend the money, it's not so, <laughs> it's not so funny. But the first one came out and Stacy can't really m remember much about what she, she taught because she didn't teach anything. She's, they live in a in a Queenslander upstairs. A Queenslander is a house that's on big big poles up in the air. And on the back is a, a veranda. And she said they sat out in the veranda and the dog was down in the garden. And that's where the dog stayed, the whole consultation. And she just the woman just looked over watching the dog down in the garden. <laughs> and at the end of all that it was teach your dog to sit and your dog should be able to sit for two hours at a time <laughs> without moving. <laughs> I have to laugh. <laughs> I'd like to see someone that could do that. <laughs> and the poor dog, if they could do it, you know, the poor dog's got to be a mental case, hasn't it? <laughs> sit there for two hours. Uh, and then when it gets aggressive with people, you tell it to sit, and if it won't sit, and it's aggressive, you've got to distract it with a ball or some food. I say, come here and have some food or a ball. So, and this poor couple, they are really dedicated. They're lovely people. They spent months and months doing that. Now this dog, they got it 12 months old and it's now three years old. They've spent all them years diligently doing what they've been taught to do. So, but that, in the end, that didn't work. So the next trainer come out. Now this next one, she, let's have a look. Which one? What did she do? Oh yeah, <laughs> this one said, "You've got to get teach it to sit, sit and stay." Same thing, solid sit and stay. And this one actually went for a walk with it, but she walked in the road. <laughs> Why they walked on the pavement with the dog because she wouldn't get it within <laughs> about three metres of the dog or more <laughs> and telling them what to do and saying, you've got to teach it to heal properly. 
really solid hill. Didn't actually say hell. <laughs> but you've got to have a solid hill, and then when you see a dog and it goes off, you've got to go sit. And so it goes sit. And won't do anything. So then the sum of that, they went back and she said, your dog's got to be able to sit for two hours. So that was one. So needless to say, they tried and tried that. That didn't work. And then the third one, she says, Stacy says, she only calls her, she reckons she had two and a half trainers out. Because this one was so useful. <laughs> she came in and once again the dog, she wanted the dog locked up. The dog was locked up all the time. So <laughs> uh, they sat in the veranda talking and this woman spent about an hour talking about her own German Shepherd that <laughs> she spent two years getting it to sit <laughs> and it still reacts to dogs when they're out <laughs> and Stacey's sitting there thinking this isn't a very good advertisement for what you're going to teach us <laughs> and she finished off saying right now this is this is a doozy you got to t once again sit you've got to teach it to sit and stay that's a solid sit Whatever it happens, it sits. Now you've got to teach it to sit and stay for two hours, minimum, without moving. And if necessary, it's got to be sit and stay for four hours, rock solid. <laughs> and Stacy's thinking, well, how long's, well, she asked her, how long's that going to take? She said, well, it'd probably take years. It took me two years to teach mine to sit. She said it might take three or four years. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm so thinking, we'll be, the dog will be dead by the time this <laughs> Anyway, so she went. That was it. I mean, that's what she taught. Didn't say how to do it. Use some treats to make it sit. Didn't say how, well, when it gets up, what you're going to do. And, you know, no information how that's supposed to work. No talk about, no go for a walk, no seeing the dog. <laughs> Give me your money, please. Thank you very much. Lots of money. Uh, so, she, they are, they're both in despair. And meanwhile, Stacey's Googling, watching dog trainers all around the world. And she's thinking, there's one, I'm following it. He's really good, he, he can do it. And another one in America. Well, he can sort out these aggressive dogs. Why isn't there one in Australia? And it's a really emotional thing because this, this dog, these owners, two years of doing this, is, imagine how dedicated you've got to be to a dog to put up with that for two years. This dog's aggressive to their friends, they have lots of friends over, and paying out all that money to try and fix it to no avail. And then thinking, we can't just keep paying out money for useless trainers. But in the end, she stumbled across me, me somehow on Google and looked at what I was doing and decided she, I was different to the others. So they rang me up and asked all the questions and they were really reluctant to help me out. They didn't want to lose money. Is there any guarantees? And I said, no, I don't guarantee. I'm pretty blunt with that. No, I don't guarantee anything. I, I, I can go there and show you what to do. You've got to do it, and I'm hands on. I'll show you what's possible, and then you've got to take over. So there's no guarantee with dogs. It's like saying, oh, I'm sending my kid to piano lessons. Is there a guarantee he'll be in an orchestra? You know, being paid with, <laughs> you know, or a reading lessons. Is there a guarantee of read? Well, you don't know, do you? You know, on one lesson as well. Look, you go there and say, teach me how to do something in one lesson. There's no guarantee you've got to take over and do it. So I teach people rather than train their dogs, but I'm hands on and I, I train the dog while I'm there showing them what to do. Anyway, that's the story of Whiskey. The Whiskey, his name was, the, the dog. And he's a nervous aggression, aggressive, but he's big and powerful and frightening. And as the time's gone on and on, He's got more and more confident 
in going for their friends. And when their friends come in, he's never made friends with them. In that three years, he's never made a friend. One, one, one of their men friends can stroke him, but when he gets up to leave, leave it's dodgy because he, he looks at him and growls. And it came to the head where they finally looked for another dog trainer. He got to the stage where he, he leapt at one of their friends I pat them going for them as they got up to leave. So it was getting pretty tricky and they was having to lock him away and they didn't want to lock well of course if you lock them away they can't learn to be with Band of Friends. And it took the man I, I think his name is Zach Stacy. Uh, it took him three weeks when they got it to be able to touch him. In their own home, that, that shows how bad he was. He's one of the worst there is for that nervous aggression. But it's, after three years, he's, he's become pretty confident as well as nervous. So I'll tell in the next video exactly what I did when I went there. So that'll do for now. That's, I'm just laying the ground down for part one. And the next video I'll say what I did when I went there which was a bit different from the other three. And are you going to say whether it worked or not? Oh, or? it worked. It worked, <laughs> yeah. It's a, he's now got four of friends of theirs who he goes really nuts to see when they come in the house and plays with them and goes all puppyish. And that is a pretty miracle down to those two, what they've done. Well, they've learned off me, but the owners have to do it, and that's pretty dedicated to getting to that stage. So he's vastly improved. Good. All right, that'll do. So it's goodbye from me, and goodbye from her. Goodbye.